In this video, I'm going to remove Active Directory from Server 2, my second server, and my second domain controller in my domain. Now there's a couple of things that you want to be sure of when you go to remove a domain controller from an Active Directory domain. The first thing that I double checked was that I had moved all of my FSMO roles back to one of my remaining servers. In this case, I have Server 1, which was my original domain controller, and it happens to be a global catalog server. And I have Server 2, which is not a global catalog server, and I'm going to be removing Active Directory from Server 2. I can double check my operations masters and make sure that all of my operations masters are set to Server 1. I also checked my schema master and my domain naming master. And if I need to, I can go into Server 2 and quickly double check to make sure it's not designated as a global catalog server. The only reason I might want to do that is to ensure that I do still have at least one global catalog server in my network, in my forest that is, and I do. Uh, so since I see that here, I don't need to verify it, and frankly I don't even need to remove it from my server, but I could do that from the Active Directory Sites and Services utility under my site, go all the way down to my server, and in properties, I can ensure that that's not a global catalog server. Again, as long as you've got another one on your network, everything's fine. So what I did actually before starting this video was I went in and I verified that server 1 was still in fact a global catalog server. So in order to remove Active Directory, one thing that a lot of users might think they could do is simply delete this or move this out of the domain controllers OU and that would be a horrible thing to do because that server is indeed still a domain controller. The best thing we can do is ensure that there's another server online and that we gracefully remove Active Directory from the server that we're decommissioning. So I'm going to go into Manage and I'm going to remove roles and features on Server 2, which is where I'm removing Active Directory Domain Controller. I'll say Next and I'll select My Server and I'm going to act as if I'm removing Active Directory Domain Services. I'm given the option to remove the features as well. In this case, I'm actually not going to remove those features in case I ever want to go back in and manage Active Directory users and computers from this second server. So I'm going to leave that alone for my own purposes, but you could certainly remove those management tools if you would like. But what you're going to see is that even though we're going through this remove roles and features process, we're not really removing the role entirely yet because we can't really remove the role until we demote the server. So when we go through this validation results, we see the option to demote this domain controller. And that's really what I want to do. I'll click on that, and it's going to start the Active Directory Domain Services Configuration Wizard. Prior versions of Windows would use a program called DC Promo, which would promote and demote servers. But in this case, I'm going to use this method so I can find my way in there, because DC Promo in its original state doesn't exist anymore. Now the credentials that I'm logged in as, the administrator for my test domain, are going to be sufficient for me to demote this domain controller. Now a lot of users might be tempted to force the removal of this domain controller. That is a bad idea to do unless something is broken beyond repair because what that's going to do is it's going to simply throw away all of your Active Directory database. We need to inform Server 1 of any last minute updates that Server 2 might know about. We need to make sure that Server 1 cleanly removes the Server 2 record from the Active Directory database so that other clients won't continue to try and talk to Server 2 if they're seeking Active Directory services. Forcing removal is always a horrible, horrible idea. Uh, there's almost no case where you really want to force removal unless it happens to be the very last domain controller in the forest and you're simply scraping out all of those last remnants. So I will not force the removal. The option to remove the DNS server is also available to me. I can remove it if I'd like and in this case I think I will remove the DNS server functionality because I'm only using Server 1 for my DNS anyway, because 
we must use good DNS to make Active Directory work right. I can choose to remove the DNS delegation if I had one, but I actually don't have any DNS delegation. When I created test domain, I didn't actually register it on the internet. It doesn't exist from any upstream DNS server. It's its own island, if you will. So I am not going to remove the DNS delegation because I never really delegated it to begin with. And now I need a new administrator password. This is going to be the password I use to log on using the local administrator password because that account is going to be created brand new. Once I don't have Active Directory, I'm not going to be logging on strictly with Active Directory anymore. I could also log on using this local administrator account. A review of my selections are here. And I can also see the script that I could use in PowerShell if I chose to script this process. And I'll click Demote. And when I do that, it's going to synchronize with server one and make sure that all of those last minute possible changes have been replicated off to another server and make sure that other server knows that I am no longer going to be available as a domain controller. It pulls me out of DNS, it pulls me out of the Active Directory database, and it actually makes this machine an ordinary member server on the domain. So as you can see, it'll automatically reboot. It's going to sign me out and restart. And when that happens, we'll see on this other server, my actual domain controller, if I refresh this screen, server 1 is the only remaining domain controller, and server 2 is placed in the computer's folder. Now, server 2 is just going to be an ordinary computer for me. I can use it for some other testing. Uh, it could be a file server still. It could still act as a server on my network, but it's not going to be responsible for domain controller stuff. Now I can log in again, and by default it's going to let me log on using the domain administrator account, and I can log on using that. I could also have chosen to log on as my local administrator account if I wanted to. And that's all there is to demoting a domain controller. As long as you move your FSMO roles, and as long as there's another global catalog on the network, and as long as you don't force that removal, everything should go pretty smoothly, and you shouldn't have any trouble.